Greetings class, welcome back to another session here in uh, teach, teaching methods specifically designed for math, science, and social studies. Today we're going to be again looking at uh, this uh, textbook here about the Kala Handbook, uh, an excellent book if you're interested in learning about uh, the cognitive academic language learning approach. And today we're going to be talking about well, what is uh, academic uh, language development and why we should be teaching it. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about why we should be, and what we should be, and how we should be. Let's jump in right here, uh, talking about uh, why we should be teaching, uh, I'm sorry, why academic language development is uh, so difficult. Um, and so let's just run through some of the uh, uh, reasons for that. One reason is that it's rather formalized and it's less contextualized. Uh, normally, you're understanding things that are going on because of the context that's involved. You hear people uh, talking at a meal or watching a game, and you can see the context that's going on. In a classroom where there are more lectures, there's less context and there's more cerebral activity. Um, uh, so it's going to be more difficult because there's less context. And it's also more formal in a, in a typical classroom. Uh, those two features are not typically taught in, uh, in language classes. Um, and so... Uh, not, I take that back. It's not that they're not taught, but they're not taught in an academic setting. Formality may be taught, but it's more taught in terms of register, uh, less in terms of uh, academic environment. And the less contextualized is also not typically taught uh, in an academic setting. There's also less interaction. One of the ways that people learn is they learn by uh, negotiation, by cooperation, by asking and getting information, uh, or watching other people ask and get information. Again, in a classroom, that's oftentimes l there's less interaction, so um, there is uh, less opportunity for students to learn in other nonverbal means, uh, or at least non first person verbal means. Uh, additionally, the uh, classroom or academic activities are often used in their mental activities. They're not physical activities. They're not like a baseball game or building a building or or whatever. So you, all these contextual clues aren't there uh, for them to help them to understand because it's all it's all thinking. A lot of it is very much of it is thinking or analyzing or assessing and and uh, so it's more difficult. Okay. Uh, academic language uh, employs language that's tuned to the context. I'm sorry, the content uh, and the tasks. So there are words designed primarily for history or science or or geography. And because those words or phrases are tuned to that particular content, unless you're t learning that content, unless you're studying that content as a language uh, component, it's going to be harder for you to use them, to employ them. Basically, what uh, what uh, Shamad is saying is you walk into a situation where you've got specialized language for a particular content area. And that is true. And so you've got to be able to understand and know how to learn on the fly uh, that type of content. Lastly, uh, academic language employs um, a lot of uh, academic functions, things like getting and get it, giving information to inform or to explain, to uh, dem uh, not to necessarily demonstrate, to classify, uh, the ability to summarize or to assess, uh, to evaluate, to persuade someone uh, that what their belief is is right or wrong or to persuade them that yours is right or wrong. Problem solving. Uh, all of these, again, very cerebral, are very much used in the classroom and they're not necessarily the first on the list uh, in a typical language classroom. They're more geared toward academic learning, and so uh, that's why it's more difficult. Your typical language class doesn't cover a lot of these areas, so it's more difficult for students uh, to understand, okay? Combining all these together, the less contextualization, less cooperation, more cerebral activity and specialized content and uh, uh, academic functions make, uh, make academic language development more difficult, okay? Okay, so why teach them? We've already talked about one, just to fill a need. Uh, these areas, again, that we're looking at back here, they're not often taught uh, in a typical classroom. And to be honest, there are a lot of teachers who believe, uh, and that's this one down here, there are a lot of teachers who actually believe students, when they walk in the door, they already understand these academic uh, formalities and specialized terminology and, and phrases. And so for them, it's going to be uh, harder for your students the st stuff isn't originally taught, and so a lot of teachers have expectations that it should be understood already. So these are two reasons why you should. The other reason is to improve the success of academic settings. 
if they're prepared for these academic environments because we're focusing on uh, academic language development, they're going to be better equipped to succeed in those areas. Finally, it promotes higher order thinking skills. Uh, as you, you look back at our list again, things like evaluating, persuading, inferring uh, are things that are higher order thinking skills. You get to be critical uh, about uh, material being covered. And so that's what one reason why academic language skills development is going to be a plus. Uh, and so there's four reasons why we should be doing uh, teaching academic language development. How to select the appropriate academic language? It's really not that hard. You simply do a needs assessment and then you plan to teach those needs. Basically, uh, that would be the answer here. The more formalized uh, setup here that Shamat describes is to identify the necessary language used in the content courses. You should be sitting in those classes, finding out what specialized vocabulary and, and phraseology um, are going to be used in these classes that you as a teacher should be writing down so that your students can make sure that they understand what they are. Uh, what type of language is used in the content course materials? Not just the, the course, but also the materials. You can read through the books and magazines or whatever stuff that's going on there and make sure that your students understand what those are. Then you develop authentic tasks. You build the bridge uh, to help them aid in the mastery of the language components of those, uh, of those academic tasks. And then, of course, you encourage your students to uh, give you advice to help you make the system better. Language ownership, and that's what this is, I'm sorry, language learning ownership is a big plus uh, for any system. I'm glad that they've mentioned it here. You find out from your students if this was helpful. Did it help them master the stuff in their in their content courses? And if it is, of course, that's good. If not, they can help you make the system, system even better. Ah. Okay, how to teach academic language uh, for your classes. Well, again, this model you're going to see over and over again. Teach it, model it, practice it. Okay, so you get them to, uh, you, you show them, you walk them through the process. Okay, if you're in a, again, if you're in a science class and you're walking through this particular process, you want them to see this stuff. Okay, but you do it first by explaining to them, you walk through this process. Here's how you're going to be doing it. And then you model it. You actually go and do it for them so that they can see it. Uh, and then you give them opportunity to practice it, okay? The other thing that you can do to teach uh, academic language is to encourage them to notice. keep Have them keep an eye on what other teachers and or what their teachers and their peers are doing in the other classes so that they can try to notice these differences, notice the things that are going on. You can, of course, teach the content language. That's uh, something that's obvious. Provide opportunities for them to practice in your classroom. Um, you may also find out that they have a project or a presentation that they need to do. You prepare them, help them uh, to prepare that for that, and then they do it in, the, in another classroom. You can, of course, obviously have them practice in your classroom. Finally, you can teach them learning strategies, which I'm sure you've heard of before and you will hear again uh, later on in this Kala approach system as well as far as uh, teaching learning strategies. Uh, as far as teaching academic language learning, you can be teaching, modeling, practicing. That's the biggest thing. After, of course, you you know you know, what the elements are, as we talked about earlier back here. And uh, that's basically all for the academic language development. This is a rather short chapter. There is a lot of good stuff in here. In my opinion, this is a major component that should be encouraged if you're going to be teaching in an academic setting so that your second language learners can have a more of a fighting chance. This is the main thing that's kind of missing in a typical language class for academic students. Uh, and that's for them to learn what these academic uh, phraseology and terminology is and how to how to interact and to survive uh, in that setting so this is a short chapter to me this is a rather important one if you do have any questions please let me know and I will be happy to help you I'll be online uh, on email and on Skype have a nice day